Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Hayashi. Welcome to the University of Mannheim in Mannheim, Germany. This is an introduction to my Samurai Success Strategies. A lot of people have been asking about this because I will be presenting this for the first time to American audiences in a few days in Washington, D.C. at a TED Talk style motivational speaking engagement organized by best-selling author Eric Swanson. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what it is I do, um, the development of the Samurai Success Strategies and its basic structure. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Hayashi. I'm a university lecturer, <laughs> television magician, and modern samurai, as if that makes any sense. Uh, but I am known to European audiences for my uh, death-defying samurai sword stunts, and as well as being a, a, an instructor for the traditional uh, Japanese martial art of uh, Shotokan Ryu Karate Do. I teach the style of the Nihon Karate Kyokai or the Japan Karate Association in my own dojo or martial arts studio in Germany. So, my main job, my day job, is teaching here at the University of Mannheim, which is one of Europe's premier universities for business and administration. Along with doing that, I also do some rather strange things on the side. Anyone who searches for me in YouTube will find that I have uh, 50, as in five, zero, 50 million YouTube uh, views for one video. I've performed on 38 primetime national television shows in 12 different countries, six different languages. I appeared worldwide in the 2014 Guinness Book of World Records for speed cutting with a samurai sword. And uh, within the magic industry, at least in Europe, I'm, I'm fairly well known. I was the 2017 FISM European Champion of Magic for Close Up, as well as the French, German, Austrian, Italian, and Swiss National Champion of Magic. So I've been around and I've been doing a lot of uh, things on the side as a hobby. <clears throat> my breakthrough came just three months ago uh, on July 9th when my segment appeared on the CW Network TV show Penn and Teller Fool Us and since then I've gotten requests um, it, it all came together at once um, I appeared just last month in uh, Las Vegas in the Penn and Teller theater show just two weeks ago in Hollywood Los Angeles at the world famous Magic Castle and um, this new exposure has led to uh, television production companies contacting me to appear as a comedian not necessarily a magician but the funny guy speaking, and uh, as well as to this upcoming speaking engagement in Washington, D.C. Now, what are the samurai success strategies? This is nothing new, actually quite the opposite. This is rather an old school of thought, 400 years old, and I'm, this is something that I've patterned my entire life after, and I'm just presenting, a, presenting this to, to the modern world, if you will. I was born in 1973. Uh, as of October 2018, I'm 45 years old. And when I was four years old in 1977, my dad bought me my first adult book, which was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, I had to wait a few years to learn how to read in order to begin studying it. But even my dad, who is a, an exceptional individual himself, will be the first to tell you that I've more or less patterned my life after this uh, system of thought that I learned quite early on. Uh, then in 1985, when I was 12 years old, I was put into a special um, educational enrichment program based on my high IQ test scores at school. Um, I didn't have to go to school the, the five days a week as the other kids did. Instead, I was allowed to go to school four days a week and spent one day a week with a mentor who drove me to universities to attend lectures, to companies to interview uh, managers and, and business people and uh, to major libraries to, to study and research my own projects. So um, I'm very grateful for this because this allowed me for uh, an early um, intellectual growth spurt that not everybody is exposed to. Yeah, and then in 1988, uh, exactly 30 years ago now, I first saw uh, an individual on television by the name of Anthony Robbins, exactly 30 years ago now, with his personal power package. I never ordered it, but I was impressed by his infomercials. He was offering audio cassettes, VHS tapes, and his booklets on um, a school of thought which already felt very much me, but I, I just 
I've been following him for 30 years and I've, I've been impressed by uh, the amount of people he's reached and touched with his, his teachings. And in the same year, uh, 1988 at age 15, I first read a book written in the year 1645. The author was Miyamoto Musashi, who was known in Japan as the greatest uh, samurai warrior of all time. Uh, based on the, the number of his confirmed uh, duels to the death, or confirmed kills and his nonstop uh, active service in combat from one battle to another. He was Japan's greatest uh, uh, soldier. He, uh, he died in old age two weeks after finishing this, this book uh, describing how he managed to survive so long. Now, this is 400 year old knowledge and even Think and Grow Rich which was published in 1937 during the depression, that's, that's 100 years old. So this. This is simply a system of thought which is centuries old, and um, I have to sort of repattern it for modern audiences because in the, ninth, uh, in the 1645 work by Musashi, he describes um, not getting too attached to good food, not getting too attached to uh, living quarters or wherever it is you live, your loved ones, your friends, because from one day to the next you have to let go of them, they could be gone or... But the reason for this, he lived in a, in a war zone. He also writes uh, uh, how he was prepared to die at any moment as long as it was an honorable death. Well, not necessarily um, uh, necessary uh, lines of thought for the modern business world. So I'm looking at the more relevant parts of his um, five chapters based on the five uh, ancient elements and his entire system of 21 principles. And I've broken it down to four uh, basic uh, lines of thought, four basic principles that, that I live by myself and uh, have allowed me to do some, some pretty awesome things. Here they are. This is the Samurai Success Strategies and I've broken it down to four uh, basic rules that I follow which spell out Samurai just so it's easier for people to remember. The first is to have a serious attitude about what it is you want to achieve. This means focus, dedication, and passion. And for me, the, the, a good example of this would be Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he started lifting weights at age 14. We have photographs online of him at age 16, and he was a beast. At age 18, he was already winning bodybuilding contests and was one of the greatest physiques Europe had ever produced. But what, what is interesting about him is when you look at interviews by people who knew him in Austria when he was young, before he moved to the United States at age 21, broke, with no money, unable to speak English, they all described the same thing. Arnold, when he left his home country of Austria to move to America, told everyone, I'm moving to the US, I'm going to learn English, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be a millionaire, he told everyone, I'm going to be the greatest bodybuilding world champion of all time, and I'm going to be a Hollywood movie star. Now, of course, everybody laughed at him, and. Uh, at least until he made it all happen. It took, it took 30 years, but he did everything he set out to do. It was this burning desire, this, 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 this laser-like focus that allowed him to do it. The second principle is mastery and understanding of your craft. Now, a very good example for this would be Michael Jackson, the King of Pop. When you look at interviews uh, of anybody who worked with Michael Jackson, photographers who did shoots with him, sound engineers who were in the studio with him, uh, directors who produced his videos, they all consistently describe the hardest working person they've ever seen. The most obsessed perfectionist with long-term vision, probably, that mankind has ever produced. Um, they, he rehearsed longer and harder than anyone else when preparing for the concert tours. He would push the entire team harder than, than anyone else. And this was starting from his early childhood, from 1969 when he was 11 years old and uh, more or less leading his, his team of brothers to make sure that the entire team was on point. So this, this is what it's about, being a master of your craft. The third basic principle is responsiveness and attention to ch changes in trend. Now when I say changes in trend, I mean changes in the market, in demand, in resources, and of course that represents changes in opportunity. A very good exa example of this would be Mr. Sean Connery. Um, I was a, a big fan of Mr. Connery in the 80s when he did his, uh, his 
uh, earlier movies, Highlander. Um, his last movie, which I believe was about 12 years ago now, at least, around 2005 or 2006, was called The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. If you haven't seen it, don't. It's one of the worst movies ever made. And that makes me sad as a Sean Connery fan because he retired after making this movie. That was his last one. Now, um, after I watched that movie once, because I'll never watch it again, in those days on DVD, on the DVD extras interviews, uh, a reporter asked Sean Connery, why is it you decided to do this film? And he gave a very, and I found this on YouTube as well, you can check it out. He gave a very brutal, uh, brutally honest answer. He said, well, a few years ago, my agent handed me a script for a story that I read that I just couldn't understand. It didn't make any sense to me, so I said no. They wanted me to play something called Morpheus in, in a, a thing called The Matrix. They made the movie without me, it became a mega hit. Two more parts followed and they called it the greatest movie trilogy of all time. Then a few years after the Matrix trilogy, my... <laughs> this is brutal. My agent handed me another script for a, a children's book I'd never read. They wanted me to play something called Gandalf the Wizard in, in a thing called Lord of the Rings. I read it, couldn't understand it, didn't make sense to me, so I said no. They made another two parts, they called it the next greatest movie trilogy of all time. Well, the next script my agent handed me after that was called The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I read it, couldn't understand it, didn't make sense, but was afraid to say no. So that, <laughs> um, although he, he did have a fantastic career, that sadly enough shows me opportunities passed up. Um, and the last and most important of, of the aspects for me is initiative. This is actually getting out there and getting stuff done, making it happen. This is getting off your butt if you want it bad enough and making your, your ideas, your dreams, your projects happen. Initiative, this is ambition, leadership, and vision. This is the ability to take charge before others do. A good example of this would be the legendary Bruce Lee. When Bruce Lee first presented his movie scripts to Hollywood executives, they said no. They said that an Asian actor would never get a leading role in American film and that Western audiences would never be interested in this uh, Asian martial arts stuff. And then Bruce Lee redefined uh, action movies forever. Now, if you take a look at the, 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 the fundamental ideas or the words that, that describe these traits, this focus, dedication, passion, the perfection, prof professionalism, self-awareness, the, the being informed, ready, and reactive, the ambition, leadership, and vision. Although the majority of people uh, would disagree with this and do not believe this, these are all learnable traits. Just like anything else in life, just like learning to walk and talk, these are traits that are learned. Just like speaking abilities, just like anything else you need to get done to make things happen in life. So. That's the basic outline, the structure of, of what I present. Of course, in the longer talk, I take case study examples from my own uh, um, career and, and things I've managed to accomplish and illustrate these ideas. So I'm very much uh, looking forward to presenting this in Washington, D.C., and um, I hope you've enjoyed this short introduction. Thank you very much, and cut.